Take a seat next to your names there, fellas. Thank you. Once everyone's settled here, let's open up the floor to some questions. Would you like to start? Right here in front. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Um, for anyone, but maybe particularly Alex or Donovan, just because you might be guarding him more, uh, what, what do you see from the kid from, Le, I don't know if it's Lede or Lede, um, what do you see from him uh, as, as far as being a potentially tough matchup for you guys? Um, I mean, he's physical, uh, can score all three levels, um, puts the ball on the floor, he can get to the rim off the dribble. Um, you know, he attacks the offensive and defensive glass at another level. Uh, you know, he's he's a great player. Um, much respect for him, and you know, I just got to really lock into this matchup. Yeah, like Donovan said, he pretty much covered it all, but he's probably the most improved player in the country so far this year, and just the jump that he made from last year to this year, it's really remarkable, and I mean, he's an outstanding player, and he's definitely a key focal point for us. Take one right in front here. Uh, Joe Ruda, Hartford Current. Tristan, obviously you had a good game against San Diego State last year in the title game. Um, just to be playing them again, sort of what are the feelings there? Did, do you think about that game a lot leading into this? I mean, no, not really. They had a whole different team last year, and, uh, you know, so did we. I feel like, you know, last year I was um, probably like, the, the, like one of the third or fourth options, so they weren't really, like, you know, worried about me last year, and then I have a different role this year. So um, I don't really think about that game, but, you know, just – just gonna go out there and do whatever I could do to, you know, help the team win. In the back. Just what's it like having this in your backyard, and how many fans are you expecting uh, for the game? Yeah, um, super excited to play in Boston. I think what, probably the only chance I get to play with UConn in Boston, so it'll definitely be special. But at the same time, it's a Sweet 16 game for us, so you know we're just locked in as if it was in any other location and. I'll have a, I'm trying to get a lot of friends and family. I don't really know the number yet. Do you have a question right here? Um, Zach Raziller, New York Post for, I guess, Tristan um, and Cam. What, what has Hassan meant, meant to this team? You know, he was uh, obviously a big recruit coming out of high school and didn't quite, you know, I guess, meet expectations at A&M and has really kind of blossomed with you guys. What, what does he mean to you, your team? Yeah, I mean, he means a lot. You know, he's the, he's the, he's the voice of our team. He, you know, he comes off the bench and he does great things. He plays great defense, and um, but he's a great teammate. I feel like number one thing that he does, he's he's a great teammate. He's a leader. He's positive on and off the court. So um, he's a good friend of mine, and um, he's really done well here. Yeah, I mean, like Tristan said, Hassan's a, a great teammate. You know, a very hard worker. Always seems to come in off the bench and and give us the spark that we need. You know, he's just somebody that is always making winning plays. You know, whether it's an offensive rebound defensively, you know, knocking down shots. He really does it all for us. And, you know, he's been great for us all year. Jim? Associate of Press. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but the president of the NCAA said today that uh, he wanted to eliminate prop, player-based prop bets uh, for games because players get has, hassled um, from fans who maybe lost their bets. Because have you, Has anyone ever had that happen to them, that someone reached out to them and said, hey, you cost me money or anything like that? And would you like to see prop bets, prop bets banned? No, I mean, no one's really reached out to us. You know, so really no comment on that right now. You're in front. Gavin Key from the London Day. This is for Donovan. Donovan, you've really stepped up your game the last few games or so. What's been the difference for you? I'm um, really just, you know, there's a lot at the line and you know, I've really felt the best I've felt in a long time. Um, you know, healthy, feeling light, um, moving around the floor better. Um, you know, and we're competing for the best of the best right now. And, you know, we're trying to do special things. And, you know, really, I'm just trying to impact the game any way I can and help my team win. Right here to the right. Yeah. Alex, uh, Steve Buckley from The Athletic. Uh, something just popped into my head. You mentioned tickets mm -hmm. and uh, accommodating people. I'm, I'm guessing with a big game coming up, You've designated somebody in the family to handle all that. Who is that person, and how does that all work out? Yeah, my mom. She's been helping me a lot with the tickets, and um, she's telling people yes and no. But um, all these guys up here got a lot of tickets, too, not just me. So, you know, we're letting other people figure it out. We're just more so focused on San Diego State. And, you know, we don't really talk about tickets or really try to focus on that at all.
Do you have veto power on the yeses or the noes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's got all the power on who can come or not. <laughs> right here. Matt Rybaltowski with Forbes. Uh, congrats on the return to the Sweet 16. For Donovan or Stefan, um, you guys are laser focused on San Diego State right now, but in terms of NIL, there's a proposed eight team NIL tournament in Vegas next year. How intrigued are you by events like, the, like that? Is that something that you would be interested in participating in? Um, I mean, I just, uh, I don't really understand it. I don't know what's going on, the rules behind it and all that stuff. Um, you know, and right now it's hard to think about other stuff, other games rather than San Diego State. And, you know, I, like I said, I don't understand what's going on in that tournament. And, you know, I, like I said, it's no real comment on that one. You're in the middle, okay. Marley Weirdo with uh, Seven News in Boston. Alex, I know you're playing in your backyard, but for the rest of you guys, the university is, you know, practically here in the East Coast, and you could say you're all playing in your backyard, so to speak. Um, how much do you think it'll help having this alumni base, having the fan base be here and help you when you are playing on a Sweet 16 stage? Uh, for anybody that wants to answer that question. Um, yeah, it's super important for us. That's why we worked so hard this year. So we knew in the beginning of the season that we can go from Brooklyn to Boston. And, um, you know, having the UConn fans was definitely a major reason why we wanted to, you know, work so hard in the off season, just having them in our background too. So, um, yeah, just super excited to have them come up to Boston. We'll definitely need their support. We'll definitely need their energy. From the back. Uh, Brandon McGear, Pawtucket Times. This is for any of the players. Obviously, much has been said about the Big East only getting three teams in the NCAA tournament. What does it say about you guys and also Creighton and Marquette, the three entries still alive at this point? And it speaks to the to the power of the league in general. Um, I mean, I feel like it just shows what type of league the Big East is. Um, you know, we got a lot of high quality teams with you know teams that should have been in the tournament and um, you know teams playing at a high level. Um, you know, and I feel like I, we're just proving, you know, how physical the league is, how good the league is, and, you know, showed everyone that we could, you know, compete against any any conference and any competition. You hear from? Dom Amori, Hartford Current. Uh, Steph and Cam, if you could kind of both speak to this, but when your coach, you hear your coach say that you guys have made yourselves bulletproof. Uh, as players, how does that uh, hit you? Does it fill you with you know, more confidence? Does it give you more confidence when you go into it, knowing that your coach is kind of willing to go out on a line like that? Uh, I mean, for me, it gives me a lot of confidence just knowing that, you know, he has that kind of, you know, thought process for us going into these games, you know, knowing how, how good, how talented we are, knowing that, you know, if we just stay connected that, you know, we feel like we can win any any kind of game, you know. I feel like um, I feel like we're the best team in the country, and I feel like that's what he kind of meant by that, you know, just sticking to what we do. And I feel like um, we could beat any team in the country when we do it. Yeah, I mean, like Steph said, I think you know, Co Coach brings up the bulletproof part when you know we're when we're at our best defensively, and I think we lock in on that end of the floor. You know, I think that um, is kind of when we're at our highest level. So, you know, going forward, I think uh, you know any team can be beaten, but you know, we're we're pretty confident that if we lock up on that end, then. We're the best team. We have about five minutes left to the turning the questions. Take one right here in the middle. Um, Zach Brazil in your post. Donovan, what, what does this day, you know, March 27th mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it means a lot. You know, uh, six years ago today, I lost my mom, and, you know, that changed my life forever. Um, you know, I really wasn't the biggest fan of basketball, and, you know, I, I loved it and enjoyed playing it, but, you know, really when she passed, it made me realize how much I love basketball and, you know, gave me a reason why to be great and, um, you know, how to, you know, just give me, you know, a reason to go. Um, you know, she was a big basketball player in Maine and, you know, had a great career, and, you know, instead of going to WNBA, she wanted to have kids and be a mom, so, um, you know, she had me and my sister, and, you know, I just try to, you know, live, live her name through the game. What? Why did her passing make you love basketball more, really go more into it? Yeah, I mean, it just, just some gave me a reason to make her proud and, you know, gave me a gave me a way to represent her and, you know, feel like I saw an attachment to her. Um, you know, she she was, you know, the best mom anyone could ask for. And, you know, she influenced me in so many ways. And, you know, I'm just hoping to make her proud. If there's no other questions, anything else? Let me take, we'll take one more here. Back right. 
<clears throat> Mark Sigler, San Diego Union Tribune for Tristan. Uh, last year's game, San Jose closes to five with five minutes to go. Uh, you guys were on a play for Justin. Yeah, I think you had the assist on that play. Could you just take us through that play and, and how important was that three uh, to kind of put them away? Yeah, I mean, we, <clears throat> throughout that game, we ran a lot of plays for Jordan to um, get shots. You know, he was he was one of our best players on the court, and uh, we know we needed a, 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 a shot to, you know, separate the lead. Um, we were up pretty much the whole game, and they started to come back. And, you know, Jordan was one of our – well, he was our best shooter last year, so – you know, it was, it was a good play, and uh, Coach drove a good play for him, and he knocked down a shot, so it, it was a big play in the game. Take one last one here in the back, right, fellas? Hi, guys. Ian Steele, ABC6, Rhode Island. Uh, for anyone who wants to speak on it, uh, Andre Berry and Malik Martin, what have they done for the team throughout these, these past couple of years for you guys? Um, I mean, they, they push us, um, you know, off the court. When we're not practicing and stuff, you know, we're just doing individual workouts and, you know, trying to expand our game as many ways as possible. You know, they've pushed us off the court and, you know, tried to help develop us, develop us into better players for this team. Anyone else in there? All set? All right, if there's other questions, you guys can head back. Thanks so much. Good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have head coach Dan Hurley join us here in about two to three minutes. Thank you. Coach, of yourself, if you want to just give some opening thoughts, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, obviously excited to, uh, you know, excited to get into Boston last night and, um, you know, the rematch of the, uh, you know, last year's title game. Um, it's funny, I think, uh, you know, since, you know, we, we, both programs have played like the maximum amount of games almost. I don't know if they got to the conference championship game in their league last year, but, since that championship game, we both got to the you know, finals of our conference tournament, um, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, coming back from that, that game last year, you know, we, we both gotten to, uh, you know, this game again. So um, a lot of respect for San Diego State and coach and their culture. Um, I think it's an a, a awesome matchup. The Sweet 16 has all great matchups. Thank you. Questions for Coach Riley? Right here in the back, right? I'm Coach Mark Ziegler from San Diego Union Tribune. I just asked Tristan about this. Um, can you take us through last year? It's a five-point game. They close it. People are kind of getting uneasy in the in the arena. And, and you called a play for Jordan. Um, hmm. What was the play call? Why did you call that uh, in that moment? And, and how much did it change the game? Yeah. Um, I mean, our people were getting uneasy, I'm sure. San Diego State people were we're excited. Um, yeah, we knew they were going to make a run. They're, you know, just, uh, you know, such a good team, such a great program, uh, culture, pride. Um, and that was just uh, an action that we, uh, you know, was probably our, our second or third counter off of something we call scissors. It was scissors triple. Um, so it was like a scissor action for a point guard. But what we really wanted was uh, – it was it was a triple for Hawkins, um, you know, and obviously, as far as movement shooters goes and clutch shooters, um, you know, they make it hard on you to get to the rim and score. Their defense is excellent at the paint, so um, you know that was the call. Where you left? Uh, Dan Pete Thamel from ESPN. Uh, Donovan just answered a question about the uh, anniversary of his mother's death. Obviously, that's something that's really shaped his. Uh, his life and his love for basketball. I'm wondering, you've obviously known him now for four or five years, recruiting him, being a local kid. I'm wondering how you've you've seen him honor her in, in, in that way and just speak to the the depth of her memory and how it shaped him, please. Yeah. Um, Donovan's just, uh, you know, it's just 
unique personality. Uh, it's, 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 you know, just rare to see somebody that just, that's dealt with what he's dealt with, a heartbreaking tragedy, um, and, and then has the, the, the personality that he has. He's so alive and he's so vibrant and he brings so much personality and he's a, he's a total giver. Um, he's just, a just a, a special, unique human being, even how he handled uh, the way he was raised by his parents and in the community in Bristol, uh, how they didn't let him get too big <laughs> for for his, is it britches, Pete? Okay. Um, you know, even the way he handled last year at the end of the season, he would have been a top 20 pick, knew it wasn't ready. Um, literally the next day just came in and said like, hey, uh, you know, coach, I'm not ready. Let's let's run it back. There wasn't a meeting with the agent and a series of the drama. You know, he's just a he's a special kid. Right here in the middle. Hey Dan, Mike Abelson, New Hampshire Union leader. Um, two for for you. Can you speak to Solomon's continued development and the way he's evolved as a bench player, uh, as a true freshman? And then, um, what does Hassan's uh, veteran experience uh, bring off the bench? Yeah, um, just with Haas, we wouldn't be where we are without that veteran, you know, multi-positional guard. Obviously, he's built he's built well for the Big East um, and games like tomorrow because he's physical and he's aggressive, um, and the shooting has improved. And you know, he, the, you can't win in this tournament without depth. And then Solo, um, you know, especially in the non-conference, Solo was awesome for us. We don't win the Carolina game without him. At MSG, he was brilliant in that game. Um, you know, league play is tougher on freshmen, um, but you you could see a guy that um, you know if he stays with us and you know and, and trusts the program, he's got a chance to develop into um, a tremendous player at, at UConn. Right here in the middle, coach. Hi, coach Marley Weirdo with Seven News in Boston. Um, you guys obviously have geography on your side this weekend. Um, how much of an impact will that make? knowing you're going to have a lot of fans um, at the Garden this weekend, and especially when you're playing on this kind of a stage. Yeah, we, we hope so. Um, you know, we, we certainly hope so. We, we, we hope the crowd could be a, a store's north for us, um, maybe feel a little bit like, like MSG um, does for us when we play there. Um, you know, the Big East tournament, and then during a, you know, during a Big East regular season too. So um, we've earned that by the season that we've had. Um, this wasn't some like gift uh, by the committee uh, to try to make it as easy as possible for us. We, uh, we, we've earned our position. We've manifested, uh, you know, Brooklyn to Boston um, since really April, since last year when we won the championship. And we've uh, worked incredibly hard over that time period to, uh, you know, to earn the opportunity to play in front of hopefully a, a you know, a, a 60% UConn type of crowd, uh, and then hopefully, you know, Illinois fans and um, Iowa State's fans don't get involved. Right here to the right, Coach. Thanks, Jacob Feller from Sportico. I'm curious for UConn, as one of the top programs in the country, to maintain that status, how important is it for the Big East as a conference to maintain its strength? And Going forward, what changes, if any, do you expect to see to make sure that the conference gets the respect it deserves? Yeah, I think we've we've proven ourselves at the top end. You know what? what uh, you know, Villanova is not too far removed from a national championship. Obviously, we won it last year. Us, Marquette, Creighton are all vying for it this year. Um, I just think some of the other situations with some of the programs just could take a little bit more time. Thad Mott has made huge strides at Butler. You know, uh, Coach Patino, Kim English. You know Ed Cooley, um, you know Shaheen Holloway. We, we we have people in in places. Villanova, obviously, with their pedigree. Um, I just think some of our programs um, are, are going to take another big jump uh, this upcoming year. And then, you know, I think the best thing that we could all do is, is schedule the right way with the non-conference. And then, you know, you got to win big non-conference games. Um, you have to. You got to come into league. Um, you know, with, with some big non-conference wins. You know, we went out and, you know, we beat Carolina, we beat Gonzaga, we beat Texas before we got to league play. You know, Marquette went out and did, you know, did the same type of thing. So we just need more teams performing at a higher level in non-conference. Here in the front, right, Coach? 
Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. Charlie Baker said today that he wanted to see uh, states ban player-based prop bets because it, it creates pressure on players. Some people are reaching out to players and kind of blaming them for losing their bets. Is that something you'd like to see to take some of the pressure off the players? Yeah, I mean, social media is... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I just think it's uh, social media is, uh, I don't really know what a prop bet is, but uh, social media is vicious, so anything we can do um, just to make it less vicious, I'd be all for that uh, relative to Charlie Baker. Coach right here at the front. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> is it down? Oh, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. What's up? How are you? Tara, what's up? Uh, I read some of your previous quotes about the transfer portal. I'm sorry, I hope you weren't asked it today. If you could change it to a certain way, like what's, what's your, is there, is there an ideal way it, it could be better, should be better? What, what do you see? Yeah, I, I think um, we, we could wait to, till we get to like maybe the conclusion of the season. That would be nice. Um, it almost feels like in a way right now, teams that are really, really successful and having great seasons or. It's almost like becoming pro sports where it feels like we're going to have like the last pick in the draft, right? Where we're like a lot of the players will be, you know, will have made decisions because we're not, we're not recruiting. We may be listed by some, some players on some lists of having shown interest, but I know that I don't have interest right now because I'm just, well, you could focus on, I think, um, you know, with, with the way that we function as a program is like on, on our team and coaching the season and, and then we'll make personnel moves, you know, once we're done coaching this group. But, I mean, you can't open up that window until the season's over. Um, you know, I, 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 mean, I don't think you should play in five schools in four years or four schools in four years. I don't think that's healthy for the individual for the long-term, like, 50, 60-year life after their playing career is over. Um, you yeah, know, because there's no connection with a university, a coaching staff, a network of alumni that could help create opportunities once basketball is over. Um, so, you know, I, I just think, uh, you know, whether it's a one-time tra- I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't like the window being open right now. Uh, and I just don't think it's healthy for somebody to be able to change schools like underwear. Coach over here to the right. Dan, Ian Steele, ABC, Rhode Island. Uh, two guys on your staff with Rhode Island ties, Andre Berry, Malik Martin. What makes them good additions to your staff? What do you see for them in the future in this business? And maybe going back to them when they were younger, you know, uh, pinpoints that you saw. Yeah, I mean, Andre was a championship player uh, for, for, for me at Rhodey and, um, you know, and, and a guy that he didn't have instant gratification. He had to earn a role and develop over time. So he's got a great message for my current players that are either having to earn their role or trying to become a, you know, a high level player. And obviously the Martin family, there's no better family than the Martin family. Hassan Martin's one of my, the best and and greatest players I've ever coached. And that is like the the greatest Staten Island family of all time right there. Those are incredible people. So uh, anytime, um, you know, you can have that type of connection. um, It just, it helps your culture significantly. Back right here, Coach. Uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Um, how how did uh, the challenges that you went through as a college player shape you as a coach and how you approach your own players today? Yeah. Um, I just think m- maybe sometimes, um, you know, coaches, or play, uh, coaches that weren't the greatest players uh, or, you know, were, were, were pretty good or had their moments, um, but then also went through some struggles. You could just relate to the entire roster um, in, a, in, a, in a unique way, that way, uh, all players at all different points of season. And then I also think, um, you know, when you've had times in your playing career where you've struggled, I, I do think it, it hardens you, it, it toughens you up. Uh, you've dealt with a lot of adversity and, and uh, you know how to handle failure. And I think as a coach, um, you know, in this business, if you if you can't handle adversity, failure, um, you know, you're you're going to have a very very hard time. So, um, yeah, I mean, bricking all those shots back in at the hall certainly paid off. 
right here in the middle, Coach. Hey, Dan, one more for you. I had a lot of talk with the, the guys, you know, how does last year build into this year? But for you as a coach, what do you learn coaching a national champion uh, that you then take uh, – into the future because I got good teams at Wagner, a couple tournaments at URI, yeah. but reaching the mountaintop, how do you then evolve as a coach and learn from it yourself? Yeah, I just think um, you take the confidence from that. Obviously, we followed up that with we've been the best team in the country, um, you know, this year and uh, with what we've been able to accomplish. Now, we're not going to be able to trade that in for anything tomorrow night versus the team we faced last year in the finals, but. Um, yeah, you know, we, we bring the confidence. Um, you know, we believe, we, we think we're supposed to win these games. Uh, it, and it's like a kind of a double because just UConn, uh, you know, the, the fan base, the organization, the history in, in men's and women's basketball, we truly believe deep down in some, 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 some place that this is what we're supposed to do this time of year. Uh, plus, we did it last year. Um, but then we didn't carry the complacency that other – uh, you know, national championship teams carry with them because since June we've worked like we haven't won anything, uh, and that's I think that's the secret sauce. We have time for about two more. Go right here in the middle, coach. Hey Dan, Matt Rebeltowski with Forbes uh, Sports Money. Um, there's there's a new sports book at the XL Center, and Temple has been under investigation for betting activities over the last few weeks. So in in light of that, should there be more seminars and player outreach efforts out there to protect the players from some of the unscrupulous and nefarious characters who are in the environment now? Yes, absolutely. Um, which is how easy it is to gamble on your phone or, you know, again, you know, locally, uh, you know, I, I don't think you could you, you you can do enough that way. So, uh, you know, absolutely. In light of that, um, you know, we've had internal conversations here with the athletic department about you know continuing to 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 stress that to our student athletes. Right here in front, coach. <clears throat> Dan Dama Mori, Hartford Current. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the other day I know you referenced making yourselves bulletproof, and today you've talked about how you've earned the position that you're in, and. The, the, no complacency. How much, with all the success of the last 60 or so games, 50 games, has your job or approach changed to where it's really positive reinforcement now? You want to continue to build the swagger and build the confidence that, <laughs> that your team has? Because there's, there's not much reason to, to yeah, criticize yeah. it. No, I mean, the, probably some of the big, I mean, you know, my superstitions are stacking up because we've won a lot, won so much. So, like, keeping track of that's been tough. Um, you know, and like last year, we, we were four seed. Uh, you know, we we earned a position to have to go out west with UCLA, Gonzaga out there, you know, and had to play Gonzaga in Vegas. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, we, we earned the opportunity to be the number one overall seed and and play in Brooklyn and take buses. Um, you know, when I talk about bulletproof. I mean, we're vulnerable. Um, this is not a best of five, a best of seven. Uh, you have one off night. Uh, you know, where everything, you know, falls apart, you know, you, you could be the best team in the country and not win the tournament. Like when I talk about bulletproof, you know, for me, the formula is top 10 offense, top 10 defense, you know, be a tremendous rebounding team, being a team that plays with, with utter desperation in terms of how hard we play, and then having depth to survive, you know, the other night a two, a two for 22, three point effort, or three, and one of those was you know, from, uh, you know, a walk-on not named Andrew Hurley at the end of the game. So we shot the ball horribly, um, but we were bulletproof the other night because of our defense, our passing, our ability to score rim twos. We could win a, a lot of different types of games. So you want to make yourself as bulletproof as possible in this tournament by just being as well-rounded and as deep. Of course, we'll take one last one here. Bruce, go ahead. You've been boring. You've been very boring in this press I'm not getting the right questions. Uh, <laughs> what do I need to ask to liven you up a little bit? Charlie, <laughs> no, it, Charlie it, Baker. There you go. No, no, we don't no, want to, no, don't no, want to no, hear no, Dan no, say. No, I'm a Bengal fan. I'm a Bengal fan. Last time, there. remember when I made you do the icky shuffle years ago? That was Mohegan? Yeah. yeah. That was. You I want to do it again? That. No, I do not. No, right. Please, no. Um, this year's team, a lot, of, a lot of opposing coaches will say this year's team is better. 
scarier to them than last year's. Last year's probably have more high end talent. Hmm. You agree with that, and why? This team fits. Um, I, I just think the the pieces fit so well. I think uh, a lot of it's been you know trial and error. The, those those couple of years when we weren't successful in the tournament, just uh, the, the personalities, the skill set, um, obviously adapting to you know the, the 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 analytics and the modern game from an offensive standpoint. The the growth there as a coach and in terms of roster. Uh, you know, roster construction. Um, you know, there's there's NBA prospects on this roster. I know that, you know, the um, we were somebody said something about you know being able to win. You know, we we pick closer to fourth than we were third in our Big East coaches preseason poll. So um, I know well, somebody on ESPN said something we could beat an NBA team or some bizarre shit. That's like uh, that's crazy talk. Um, but uh, you know, we do have several players on this team that. Um, are going to play in the NBA, are going to be drafted in the NBA, are going to be drafted in the lottery in the NBA. Um, and, and you can't deny when you watch this team play that it's a fun team to watch because the ball moves and we share it and we play for each other. You could see the culture. You could see the energy. You could see the commitment to defense. You could see the personalities, um, you know, up and down the, the organization. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a great team. It's just been a, it, it, it's been a fun team. I think we've got a we finally have kind of figured out the formula. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Good luck Thank tomorrow you. night. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs>